Welcome to Helsingborg, Sweden, not to be confused with Helsingborg, Denmark, just minutes away across the strait. I'm an American journalist and I've been coming here for years and I'd love to show you around. Let's take a quick look at Helsingborg and then go explore all that this region has to offer. One of Sweden's oldest cities, Helsingborg was settled nearly 1,000 years ago. Though I love the history, it's the active lifestyle and accessibility that brought me here. From the beautiful North Harbor with its charming waterfront, to the Dörnkurs Cultural Center designed by famed architect Kim Utzen, to the 14th century St. Mary's Church, Helsingborg offers a lot in a small space. You can shop for international and brand names on Sweden's oldest shopping street, and that's just steps away from the North Harbor. At the end of the shopping street is Helsingborg's centuries-old medieval fortress, Shannon. Walk up to the top where the views are breathtaking. On clear days, you can see as far as Copenhagen, and you can always see beautiful Helsingborg down below. Just three miles north of Helsingborg is a palace with a special story. Welcome to Sophia Rowe. My host here is Annika Malgren. She's the manager of the palace and its beautiful gardens, and she's volunteered to show me around. Sophia Rowe was named Europe's most beautiful garden in 2010, thanks to the more than 500 varieties of rhododendrons and abundant roses and dahlia. Sophia Rowe also hosts garden festivals and outdoor summer concerts during the spring, summer, and fall. In 1864, Sweden's crown prince Oscar purchased land here to build a summer castle for his wife Sophie. Sophia Rowe looks across to Hamlet's castle in Denmark. So now we're in the King's former dining room, and this is an award-winning restaurant. In fact, it's won many awards. And we're about to enjoy some food produced with local ingredients from the Northwest Skåne region. So, bon appetit. This part of Sweden is known for its farms and rich culinary heritage. And having lunch at Sophia Row was the perfect way to end a few hours in this beautiful park and palace. I'm in Frederiksdal. This is an open air museum, and basically, you'd come here to see and to experience how life has been lived in Sweden throughout the centuries. We're going to go inside and meet our host, Charlotte, who's going to treat us to a traditional Swedish fika and to tell us stories about superstitions and how herbs played a role. Only a few minutes from Helsingborg's North Harbor, Fredriksdal allows you to see a variety of landscapes in South Sweden and to learn more about the region's kitchen gardens. And we have this basilica. Okay, so that's basil. How is that used? Yeah, well, you have the girl now. She, it's 1850, and she's so happy with this man, and she wants to keep him. Every day before he goes to the fields, she takes the basilica and she puts it in his clothes, and he will always come. And who say it might work even today? Charlotte and I continued our stroll. Fredriksdal is actually larger than Stockholm's well-known Skansen. It was a gorgeous September day and we found a lovely table along a path in the woods where we sat down for coffee and Swedish cinnamon buns called Kanabula. The Swedes call this tradition fika, and it's certainly something you'll want to experience it's basically taking time to appreciate life with others. Our next stop was the Old Town Quarters. Historic buildings were brought here from Helsingborg City Center for preservation. It's like a stroll along Nostalgia Lane. Could I ask, what is it you love about working at this place? Oh, wow, it's a lot of things. <laughs> it's, well, it's pretty all year round. The nature is fantastic and the culture is interesting. There's always some story you can tell. Yeah. And I keep learning new things. That's most important. Well, thanks, Charlotte, for showing well, me Fredrikstad. You. You're welcome yeah. back. Yeah, thank you. Okay. In the 1890s, tourists thronged to the Grand Hotel in Mula for a simple reason. Men and women could swim together on a common beach. Mola is the birthplace of Swedish sin. Our reason for coming here, though, was to experience Kula Bay, a nature reserve. Kula Bay is an outdoor playground with one of the best golf courses and with the best views in all of Sweden. The expansive peninsula, characterized by its rugged coast, offers trails for hiking and for mountain biking. Described as a compact New Zealand, Kula Bay also offers a variety of water sports, including the extremely popular 
Porpoise Safaris. You could hardly throw a rock without hitting a castle here in the south of Sweden. They're literally clustered in this area. Now this particular castle, it's about 15 minutes from Helsingborg, and it's called Uraness Castle. Building began here in 1914. It was meant to resemble Versailles, but money became an issue, and what we have now is a Baroque castle instead. It was finished in 1918. Now this was only a summer home for the man who built it. He had a home 10 minutes away and he died one year later in 1919 after his dream home was finished. Let's go around and take a look. One of the remarkable things about this castle is that it was built during the First World War. Many of the building materials had to be shipped through battle-torn regions to the south of Sweden. Today the castle features a hotel and restaurant where you can dine outside with beautiful views of the Orison. So now I'm in Sudarosen. and it means South Ridge, and this mountainous region is actually a national park. There's a lot to explore here, but before I take you on that journey, I'm going to head up and have lunch with my friend Frida. You wouldn't expect to find some of the region's best dining at a national park, but Frida and I enjoyed a delicious lunch, and we couldn't have asked for a better table. There's a lot to explore here on a variety of trail systems that range from short strolls to day-long hikes. We began with a walk around the lake, situated among the highest ridges in the south of Sweden. This is unique for Skåne because most of Skåne is flat, except for here it's mountainous, and that's because there were multiple collisions of tectonic plates that formed these rifts and the valleys down below that make for a great day's hike. Uh, fresh water well. Okay. With some really pure water coming up from the ground. Want to have a try? Yeah, I'd love to. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Please. Thank you. Wow, it's refreshing and pure Sweden. Today it's all about cycling and the stars. I've just stepped ashore on the island of Van, situated between Denmark and Sweden, and the way to get around here is on a bicycle. I'm going to go pick up one now, and I'm going to pedal to a place that honors a man whose whole life was spent gazing up at the heavens. You have plenty of bikes to choose from when you arrive on the island, so grab a bicycle to pedal past gorgeous countryside on roads that are mostly free of automobiles. Biking's a fun way to get around Van. You'll find the pedaling easy and enjoyable, and there's no better way to get to where you're going on the island than on two wheels. I've arrived at the Tycho Brahe Museum. Who was Tycho Brahe? He was a man who changed the way we look at the universe today. How so? Let's go find out. So Matthias, what is it that makes Tycho Brahe so important to our history today? Well, first of all, he is, he is a person living on this island for 21 years during the second part of the 16th century. Uh, and he became famous because he was the one making world's history's most accurate astronomical observations on this island during 21 years. And he had assistants coming from all of Europe to study together with him. Uh, and he was absolutely the most famous day in, in Europe at that time. Before leaving the Tycho Brahe Museum, I headed across the road for a look in the observatory where Tycho performed most of his groundbreaking work. It was a good ending to a fun day in Vin. My next stop was the Citadel in Landskrona. It was built as a fortification in the mid-1500s, but it later became home to some gruesome characters. The Citadel served as a prison during the 18th and 19th centuries. Situated directly across the island of Van, Landskrona Citadel is well worth a visit. 
We drove along some of the most beautiful highways in southern Sweden. We passed through Turakov, a charming fishing village that's also a thriving summer resort. We also stopped at Hovshalle, another nature reserve where the famous Swedish director Ingmar Bergman shot parts of his film The Seventh Sill. We had a fika at Lekorna Lundgren, where one of Sweden's former kings enjoyed the vanilla hearts cake, and so did we. And then we headed to a special farmhouse where an opera singer once lived. She once told an interviewer that she began to sing before she could walk. She grew up in this farmhouse in this beautiful countryside. And I'm talking about Birgit Nilsson, a farm girl who went on to become one of the world's most famous sopranos. This spot is now a museum and also her old home. Let's go inside to meet her niece and to learn more about this fascinating lady. Birgit Nilsson was a dramatic sopranist who performed operatic and symphonic works. Her voice was noted for its overwhelming force and its bountiful reserves of power. She was particularly gifted at hitting the high notes. So get to Birgit was capable of hitting such high notes that she sometimes broke things. Yes, she did. It's, there's a remarkable story about how she cracked the windows in a church in Sweden when she sang. <laughs> but it's not the only thing she cracked. Uh, once she sang in Tehran and uh, she had bought some beautiful earrings and at the concert that evening when she sang, she cracked one of them and it was her voice that made it crack. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> The farmhouse where Birgit Nilsson grew up and loved to return to all of her life is next door to the museum. We went inside to see it just as Birgit had left it when she died on Christmas Day in 2005 at the age of 87. Even if you've never heard of Birgit Nilsson, this is a place that you can appreciate. It's not often that you come to a museum where you can learn about a person's professional career and then walked next door to the farmhouse where they grew up. Birgit Nilsson was a simple farm girl who went on to international acclaim. But this is the place that she loved coming back to and spending time, and I know that you will too. Our next stop was Bostad, one of Sweden's most beautiful towns. With its iconic bathhouse at Hotel Skansen and its nearly always blue skies, Bostad is known for its gorgeous coastline as well as the Swedish Open Tennis Tournament, attracting great players like Serena Williams since 1948. I walked the town's lovely streets to find another tradition that Bostad is known for, and that is weaving. Today I want to tell you about a remarkable woman. Her name was Matemos Fiatstrom, and she wanted her art to be appreciated on floors. I'm here in Bostad in one of Northern Europe's most important weaveries. Let's go see what it's all about. Works of art have been produced here since 1919. Today, the rugs and woven textiles are produced on specially built looms and all by hand using designs and instructions that have been passed down from generation to generation. It's part museum and part shop with wonderful displays of color. In addition to the classical carpets, there are also contemporary carpets. This one on my right, for example, this is the audio waveforms of a trout transferred into the fabric of a carpet. And on my left, well, this is the audio waveforms of a satellite landing on a planet. There's a saying here that these carpets are not expensive, but they do cost a lot. Now this particular design is owned by Steven Spielberg, and guess where he has it? On his bathroom floor. That would have made Martin Moss Fjordström very proud. From beautiful palaces and sprawling gardens, to nature reserves perfect for soft adventure, to open-air museums that present the best of Sweden's story traditions, and sites that celebrate her gifted performers and artists, Northwest Skåne has a lot to offer. And it's all easily accessible from one of the most charming towns in all of Sweden, Helsingborg, a beautiful seaside town just an hour from Copenhagen at the narrowest part of the strait that separates Sweden from Denmark. We've only been able to show you a little of all that you can do when you visit this region in the south of Sweden. Make sure that your next cruise ship visit calls on Helsingborg, Sweden. I'm Ralph Grizzle, and I'll see you next time.